today I'd like to review the O Freedom History Curriculum, the Secular Edition. And this is marketed as a conscious U.S. history curriculum for grades 3 to 7. And this is a history told from a different perspective than typical history programs. It is told largely from the perspective of African Americans and other minority groups in the United States. So this is the curriculum. It's a PDF that you download, and there also is a journal that you can purchase either um, from the website wokehomeschooling.com or from the, um, you can also purchase it from Amazon, although I think Amazon may only have the Christian version of the journal that includes a uh, prayer time, but there is a secular version of the journal available from the website. So this is the guide that you receive. So it starts out with a welcome and explains why the person who wrote this decided to write her own history curriculum. And she felt that typical history curricula were lacking in a perspective that told the, persp the point of view of Native Americans and African Americans and other minority groups in this country. So she couldn't find a good alternative to those types of history curricula, so she decided to write her own. And she has a little guide on how to use the guide. And it says that each weekly lesson plan includes a discover section, which is daily readings from the main spine textbooks. And she says that will take about 30 minutes. Storytelling, which is historical fiction or other stories that illustrate the time period, and that's 25 to 30 minutes. And then there's a section for experience, and that will vary in the amount of time it takes, but it has links to online resources. So things like songs, poetry, documentaries, so a lot of different videos, art, maps, all sorts of different things in experience. Then there's a discuss and reflect section that allows children to discuss what they are learning, especially discussing with a parent the difficult things that you might learn about American history and some of the things that happen in history, and then reflecting on those. And then she says to allow them time, she suggests just five to 10 minutes to write their reflection in a journal. And she also includes some suggestions for making reflection time engaging. She recommends an Amazon Prime membership, Spotify account, and Netflix account to take full advantage of all of the multimedia resources that are referenced in this curriculum. Then she has a few questions that you can ask during the lessons just to um, further the learning, check for understanding, that sort of thing. And um, they include things like who are the leaders and who are the helpers, and then also who was the president of the United States at the time. And your children might have to look into that or research it because it may not be included in the readings. And then also what part did the president play in that time in history? And there are several other questions as well. And then she includes this African proverb, which kind of sums up the reason for writing this curriculum and looking at history in a slightly different way than many other history curricula. Um, it says, until the story of the hunt is told by the lion, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. There is a book list, but um, the publisher has not wanting to share that publicly because she feels like that's proprietary to the curriculum. So I'm not going to put that in the video, but there are a lot of good resources, several different spines, as well as literature that tell the stories um, in fiction, but historical fiction about people that lived or could have lived during the different time periods. And the literature selections typically center around minority um, characters. And some of them, some of the literature selections are actually nonfiction or at least maybe a fictionalized account of something that happened, but it's a true account like, or true event in history that did occur. So here are the lessons, and there are 38 lessons 
in this curriculum, which is a little bit unusual. Most history curricula, or really any curricula for homeschool, have 36 weeks of lessons. So having 38 is a little bit unusual, but as homeschoolers, you certainly have the flexibility to add a couple weeks or to leave out one of these weeks if you wanted to. Also, um, every six weeks, there is a dig deeper week scheduled, so you could simply skip a couple of those if you needed to get this done in a 36 week period. The dig deeper weeks though, I kind of like because they allow you a chance to take a step back from what you've learned, process it all together, kind of discuss it, maybe take some field trips or finish up. You know, if you're running a little bit behind on the reading, it gives you a week to to catch up on that before you move on to the next week. So those are kind of nice to have every six weeks as just a little bit of a break. You could also use that week to watch more of the videos and do more experiential type things, you know, craft projects related to that time period or something along those lines. So it is an interesting curriculum in that it covers all of U.S. history in one year. And that's kind of unusual. A lot of history curriculum that I found broke U.S. history up into two separate years. It's really nice to have kind of a condensed U.S. history that covers all of the U.S. history from it starts at ancient native cultures that lived in the Americas and goes all the way through to managing disaster, which covers Hurricane Katrina and the terrorist attacks of 9-11. So it really covers the entire um, period of time of U.S. history. There were some things that I felt like were missing. Now, history is always going to have certain events that are left out. It is always up to the author of of an, an account of history, and in this case, the author of a curriculum to decide what to include and what to leave out. It's always a judgment call as far as what's important and what's not. So you will have to be the judge of that for yourself in terms of what what historic events you think are important to cover. And if you would like to include things that weren't included in this curriculum, you could still use this curriculum, but simply add those in, maybe supplement or maybe replace something that's in here with something else that you think is important. But what I did find that we're missing in terms of events and time periods from history that were not included in O Freedom that are typically included in a lot of other history curricula were, first of all, the the early colonies were really not mentioned. It goes right from Columbus and talking about did he really discover the New World when you have week three, um, the Arawaks encounter Columbus, and then week four, New World goes right from there to talking about the birth of race and chattel slavery and then the transatlantic slave trade and then skips right from there to tyranny and revolution, which is about the Revolutionary War. So I think the transatlantic slave trade week is the colony, you know, it's the time of the early colonies, but there really is very little mention of the early colonies in the U.S. and life in the U.S. before Revolutionary War, like back before it was the United States. So life in America before um, the Revolutionary War. So that was left out. And next, I could not find any mention of the French and Indian War anywhere in this curriculum. So that's left out of history in this account. Also, Lewis and Clark and their expedition was only mentioned in the Dig Deeper week. Um, I believe that was Let's see, probably Dig Deeper number two, I think it was. And it was only mentioned briefly with just one suggested online resource. So very little mention of the Lewis and Clark expedition. The Salem witch trials were not included, which I assume they're probably not included in a lot of history curricula, but I had found some good historic fiction about the Salem witch trials, and I think it's a really interesting time period and something that is referenced very often, so it's just for cultural literacy, good to know about the Salem Witch Trials. Also, as far as modern history, the Cold War and the fall of the Berlin Wall were not mentioned in this curriculum, and then the Korean War was not mentioned, and I the only mention I could find of John F. Kennedy's assassination was in a Dig Deeper week. Um, I believe that was Dig Deeper number five. That was week 31. So very little mention of that. Um, It was simply something that 
It was kind of optional that you could include during the Dig Deeper week. But again, every history curriculum is going to have its own biases and its own you know, things that it leaves out or includes. So just take that into account. You have to figure out what's most important for you. And you can always tweak any curriculum you use and you know, insert some things that are left out, leave out things that you think don't need to be included. It's up to you as the educator. Just for some comparison's sake, I also have the Blossom and Root U.S. History curriculum. Now, Blossom and Root's curriculum only goes from the time of the colonies until the time of the Bill of Rights. So it really is not a complete account of history by any means. It's If you lined it up with the O Freedom curriculum, it pretty much um, only goes to about week 13 or 14. So it obviously doesn't include any of the things historically past that time period. But just to compare what they have in their curriculum before that time period, and Blossom and Root does endeavor to be a multicultural approach or have an, a multicultural approach to history. So they include a lot of mentions of Native Americans and other uh, minority groups. They do have quite a few mentions of slavery in the U.S. and how that um, was impacted or impacted history. So just to compare, though, the lessons in those two curricula, Blossom and Root has just one lesson on the first Americans and the time before Columbus. But O Freedom actually devotes three weeks to the early, you know, before or during Columbus time. So they have the ancient native cultures week, life before colonization, and then the Arawaks encounter Columbus, which is more about the impact that Columbus and those early explorers had on the Native Americans. So three weeks are devoted to that in O Freedom. And then they each devote one week to Columbus. Um, I'm counting this New World Week in O Freedom as focusing on Columbus and those early explorers of the, of the Americas. And then Blossom and Root devotes six whole lessons um, to colonial America, whereas O Freedom really only has a brief mention of colonial America in the same week as um, New World. So that same week four, there's a brief mention of the colonies in America, but the, other than that, there's not a lot of coverage of colonial America before the Revolutionary War. And then slavery and um, its emergence in the U.S., there are two lessons on that in Blossom and Root and three weeks on it in O Freedom. Just for comparison, I feel like Blossom and Root does a better job of covering the early colonies in the United States or before it was the United States, but in North America. Um, but O Freedom is a more comprehensive curriculum in terms of covering all of U.S. history. But it does go at a faster pace. Since you're covering it, if you do it in one year, it does say in the guide that you could separate it out and spread it out over two years if you wanted to. But because it, it puts everything in what could be done in one year, it has to be done kind of quickly. So that's why certain events are left out and some things are um, just covered kind of quickly, like not in great depth. So be aware that it's going to be more of a surface introduction to these topics, but likely your children will get U.S. history again in high school because this is really meant to be an elementary or middle school curriculum. So they'll be covering it again in more depth at a later time. Just to show you what the, the weeks look like, how much guidance you get in terms of what to do. It reminds me a bit of Book Shark, the way it's laid out. It's a four-day-a-week schedule, just like Book Shark and Sunlight. And um, each week covers a specific topic. So, for example, week one is ancient native cultures. And it lays out very clearly what to do each day. So on day one, for example, of this week... You read in Before Columbus, the Americas of 1491. That's one of the spines. So you'll read the intro to page 11, basically to the end of chapter one. And then for storytelling, you'll read the novel Seas Behind Trees, which is a story about a Native American. And you'll read the first two chapters in day one, and then the next two chapters in day two. 
obviously you have flexibility to shift that to a different day if you needed to. And then for experience, it recommends that you eat something with corn and discuss all the ways that corn is used today to make various foods found in the grocery store. And they also suggest that you search the internet and learn what other civilizations around the world date back to 2600 BC. So that might be interesting. Of course, that introduces the topic of world history. And uh, if you're trying to keep it kind of simple and get finished with history so you can get on to other subjects, you don't have to do everything in the experience section, of course. And then in Discuss and Reflect for week one, it says discuss why maize has been a mystery. And in the Why No Wheels section on page 17, and I'm assuming that would be in the Before Columbus book, um, the author writes, one culture's achievement may be another culture's blind spot. So discuss that. So that's kind of an inquiry-based approach. You know, give your child you know, kind of a curious statement and discuss what's meant by it. Make sure they understand it, but also just discuss what that could mean and how that can be applied and how that is true or isn't true. You could have a bit of a debate about it. So depending on the age of your children, um, you would have more or less in-depth discussion on that. And then you're supposed to, or your child is supposed to list two or three things that you learned about this week and then say what you would like to learn more about. Always a good question to ask. Every week includes a section for notes and then this little box that says people, places, and events. And those are basically topics and terms that are mentioned in this particular week's coverage, um, whatever was read in that week. You would want to just make sure your children remember those and understand them. It also is a great way as you're flipping through the curriculum to see exactly what's covered in each week and have an idea of what you'll be discussing. And then for week two, I'm not going to go through every week, of course, but for week two, you see it continues on with the Before Columbus book and lays out what chapters to read each day and also in, in continues with Seas Behind Trees and lays out which chapters. So for week two, it includes a video to watch. It recommends America Before Columbus, and it says it's available for purchase but not streaming. So if you're going to do that, that would be an extra expense. And also has a website link. The nice thing about this being a PDF is that you can click on those links and actually go right to the websites. So you really don't have to spend the money to print this curriculum. It's a PDF, but your children don't really need to see, to see it. It's really for your reference. It just tells you what to do each day. So there's no included worksheets or um, diagrams or maps or anything like that that you would really need to print. So it's 50 pages for the PDF, and you can just store it on your computer and just pull it up when you need it, click on the links, and go to the websites, and just use it as an electronic you know, digital document. Just to note, the author does say in the guide at the beginning of this curriculum that she knows that she's included more than you could possibly do in one school year, and that's meaning if you do all of those extra experiences and everything, and she says it would make perfect sense if you took two years to complete it. So you could take two weeks to do each of the week, week lessons if you wanted to and spread it out over two years. That is also a possibility. But if you really just want to give your children an overview of all of U.S. history in one year, you could follow it more exactly and finish all of U.S. history in one year if you wanted to. Overall, I think this is a great curriculum for an overview of U.S. history and to get a different view of U.S. history. I did find in looking over the resources and the books and just noticing the things that were left out that to a certain extent this goes in the opposite extreme from a typical U.S. history curriculum. Many U.S. history curricula take a very Eurocentric view and leave out many of the things that happened to minority groups in our country that were not good events and that were injustices that occurred. This curriculum seems to go in the opposite extreme. It takes a very African-American centric view of history, which is perfectly fine, but just be aware of that if you choose this curriculum or if you're considering this curriculum, because it does have sort of a negative view of U.S. history 
and really emphasizes all of the injustices that have occurred in the course of history. So you might want to think about balancing that to a certain extent, just so your child doesn't have a completely negative view of U.S. history. But it also is nice to have that different approach and to be able to give your child both perspectives. I think ideally it would be nice to combine this curriculum with resources from a traditional U.S. history curriculum and have a child compare and contrast how history is told by different curricula or by different um, authors. That might be something to be done in high school. I think you could really use this curriculum in high school along with another curriculum and compare and contrast the two and talk about how authors always have bias and you could even tie that in with journalism and how you know there's really no such thing as completely fair and balanced. Everybody always has a bias, whether it's a history book or a uh, article in a magazine or something like that. So this could be a good thing to use as an adjunct to another curriculum to give another perspective. <laughs> 